Good evening. I'm Bob Baldacci, and welcome to Baldacci on Business's Pitch Me Show, uh, where each month we invite an entrepreneur who will pitch their product or service to our very esteemed panel of experts uh, who may end up providing some services or perhaps even writing a check. So uh, hopefully we, we, we hope that you folks uh, watching the show uh, enjoy it and learn from it. And uh, again, as I mentioned at, uh, at our uh, presentation last month, if you like what you hear, uh, please feel free to contact the entrepreneur directly if there's something you can, you can offer uh, uh, the particular business or product or service. So again, thank you for watching. And uh, what, before we introduce our guest, entrepreneur, I would like to introduce our panel. So on my immediate uh, left is my good friend Sandy Spaulding. Sandy is growing a beard yep. in honor of Movember, Movember. prostate cancer awareness. Prostrate or prostate? Prostrate. Prostrate Pro cancer. Prostrate myself to prostate <laughs> cancer. Okay. Yes. But the, the beard is... Uh, it's not for the Red Sox. Okay. But no. they did win the World Series. They did. A while ago, but yeah. that's what it's for. Lee thought you looked a little scraggly, but uh, there's a good reason for yes. it. And Don Gooding. Don has uh, been a frequent uh, member of, of our panel. Don runs the Maine Center for Entrepreneurial Development. He runs the Top Gun program and uh, is very active as an officer with the Maine Angels and has been known to write a check or two uh, for a number of different businesses. And it's always Movember for me. <laughs> it's always Movember for you. I like the stash. It's good. And uh, his wife, who we've had on the show before, promoting the uh, Young Entrepreneurs uh, program, Build a Biz, is a noted cookbook uh, author in her own right and has a new book, which we won't disclose the, uh, the title of uh, uh, just yet. But uh, anyway, Don, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. We have a new panelist who I'm uh, very uh, pleased to welcome to our show, Alicia DePazzi. Alicia has been, uh, spent 20 years in sales and marketing a former uh, director of uh, marketing for Pineland Farms, where you were involved in rolling Pine out products and... The Pineland Farms Food Group. Uh, Pineland Farms Food Group. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but you were involved in helping to, to merchandise the products and, and selling them across the country. Correct. And uh, so we're really pleased to have you on the show, Alicia. Thank you. And finally, uh, Mr. Bailey, what's the purpose of the tie? Is that a marine tie? That is an FBI tie. Okay. And you better watch it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's always great to have Lee on the show. I know Lee is actually a frequent uh, guest lecturer of the FBI uh, at Quantico and other places. So, uh, Lee, uh, I mean, I can't, no introduction is adequate uh, for his career. And uh, we're so lucky to have him here in Maine. And he's been very active with a number of different businesses, uh, helping to to move the economy forward, create jobs, and make something happen here in the state. So we're very lucky to have you here, Lee. In lieu of an introduction, please inform my <laughs> friend Sandy that it is prostate cancer that he is supporting. <laughs> Those with prostate cancer are usually dead. <laughs> <laughs> One of the wittiest men in the world, too. So anyway, thank you, Lee, for, uh, for, for being here and for all the help you've given this show and, and it, with your participation. So our entrepreneur this month is Jesa Porciello, an Italian uh, name. I, I know that's not the way the Italians would pronounce it, being a Baldacci. But uh, Jesa has uh, a fascinating product that she's been working on. She's gone through your program, right, Don, the uh, Top Gun program. And uh, we're very excited to hear what you have to offer. I know it's called Life Kite, and it's a mobile app to help people organize their goals and objectives in, in a very social way, I guess, yes. using social media and whatnot. But why don't you okay. feel free to, uh, to make your pitch okay, and great. welcome. Um, so thank you, Rob, and thank you, panelists, for this opportunity. Um, my name is Jasa Porciello, and I am co-founder and CEO of LifeKite. Um, we're an early stage startup. Uh, LifeKite is an online platform that allows people to share their juicy goals and life aspirations uh, and then to gather help from their social circles or offers of goods and services to help them get those goals off the ground. 
it's like uh, a place to visualize and crowdsource your bucket list. So a little about me, I am a fourth generation Mainer and proud to be. Um, and I have a past of uh, foundation fundraising for institutions. I've raised a lot of money for um, getting the goals off the ground of nonprofit organizations, and now I'm turning my attention to individuals. Um, I have a background in art history as well, and that is uh, a, a degree that I'm bringing to bear on all the choices that we're making about what the interface of LifeKite will look like. So how did LifeKite come to be? Well, I want to show you a few things. So I'm a life lister. I've always had a life, you know, a list of what I want to have happen in my lifetime. But this is what it looked like. Uh, not terribly attractive, right? Uh, certainly we can do better than this. Uh, I'd find it in the back of a drawer somewhere or stuck between some books, and I'd think, I've lost another year in making something happen with this. I'm also somebody who uses vision boards, and I don't know if you're familiar with a vision board, but this is something that's very popular. Oprah had it on her show. Millions of people do this. This is on her website. Um, it's also, it, it speaks to the part of our brain that is um, visual. 40% of our brain is devoted to images. And so you'll hear people who are really uh, into goal setting talk about visualization. Uh, everyone from Bill Gates to Olympic athletes use this tool. So then I started thinking, well, what if we were to use both of these tools together? What if I were to, for example, illustrate my life list, which is what I did? And you can see it looks sort of like a set of kites, a string of kites. So I would carry this around with me in my pocket as a way to start talking about it, and I would start conversations with people. What are your life goals? And sure enough, people started saying to me, I could use one of those. I would buy one of those for a friend. And so I thought, OK, let's see. Let's leave the analog behind and see if we can build something digital that's you know, not old-fashioned anymore. So then we started building this digital website that was crowdsourcing lifeless. And then we started surveying people. We surveyed and we did intensive interviews. And what we found is that people do, in fact, track their life goals in some fashion. Um, but they're looking for a tool that will do a better job. And when we dug a little deeper, we found that people actually felt alone in the pursuit of their life goals. They also were feeling like those life goals were stuck uh, in the back of the drawer like I had or on their fridge. They weren't mobile. And other attempts to actually address the needs of this group have been not visual, kind of clunky on the web. They're just not working. And lastly, what we found was that there was nowhere on the web that you could actually post your life list and have uh, a, a capacity to match with offers of goods and services or social circles that would actually give you the resources you need to have those goals happen. So what we're building, LifeKite, is crowdsourced, it's mobile, it's dynamic, it's very visually driven, and it has this capacity to match people's life lists with offers of goods and services. So for example, I've always wanted to go to Indonesia, and I have no idea how to start. So I would go into the interface, which there's an image of the interface over here. This is our prototype. Um, we've just started out. Um, and so if you look at that prototype, you can see I would go into that site, I would set the goal, and then I would set an image, some image that really called to my imagination and had me remember why I want to go there at all. And that's what we call a kite. So a goal plus an image is a kite. And then you can invite people in. So you could invite just your spouse to see that goal, or you could carve out a group of your friends who are travelers, or you could, you could show your entire Facebook network this, this kite, this goal. Or you could make it public, and anyone who came to the site could see it. And then what you start to see is that kite becomes a clearinghouse. It's a focal point for recommendations, word of mouth, for links to offers of goods and services. In my case, going to Indonesia, maybe I would see that Lonely Planet has a new guide uh, to Indonesia that would come up, or photos, or I would get uh, discounted tickets to Indonesia that would come up as part of keeping that life, um, that life kite aloft. The thing that's really amazing about that also is that it's filtered through our social circles. So it's not this fire hose of information, but it's really filtered to the circle of friends that you've invited into that kite. So then we started to look and see, well, what's the market for this? Who might be interested? And we did um, a lot of surveys and interviews. And what we found is that the people who currently use Pinterest overlap very heavily with those who might use LifeKite. 
very strong overlap there. That's college educated women ages mid 20s to mid 40s. Um, and as you may know, that has enjoyed a meteoric rise, Pinterest, to 48 million plus users at this point. The other segment that we saw as a theme and who might use uh, LifeKite is LOHAS. I don't know if you're familiar, it's Lifestyles of Health and Sustainability. Um, here you want to picture the lady with the Prius, uh, she shops at Whole Foods, uh, she might do yoga. So there are about 40 million plus of this market segment in the U.S. And the value that's uh, established for that market is about 280 billion a year. So then we've been thinking about revenue streams, and we have lots of sound candidates, but one in particular seems to be the best match. It's the most natural match, which is that when somebody sets up their life goals, and we actually limit the number of goals you can set, you're setting a series of priorities about what is important to you and to have offers of goods and services coming in to help you get those goals done is going to be very appealing to an advertiser who knows that that prospect is actually seasoned because they've made that subject a priority. So it's not a banner ad, it's very targeted. So that's the chief way we see that the revenue would come. But we've also investigated to see about subscription model and we've seen from surveys and interviews that people are actually interested in a price point of about $5 a month for a subscription to LifeKite. So where are we now? We've gotten uh, incubator level venture capital funding from Serendip Ventures. We've also gotten a couple of Maine Technology Institute grants. Um, and what we're doing right now is putting our beta prototype through its paces. We're really looking to see where are the kinks, making sure it's intuitive. And, uh, and so my ask of you is, if you know of anybody who you think might use LifeKite, I would love to I would love send them my way. If you know anybody who's a really good beta tester who's going to find all of the places where it might break, please send them our way. And then finally, opportunities for public relations. Um, we need to drive the user body to about 10,000 in order to attract the interests of advertisers. So all three of those things would be of great value. Thank you. Jason, thank you very much. Well done. Panel, what do you think? Uh, Mr. Bailey. Um, I am not <coughs> a big social network guy because I tried it and got flooded. But I do want to observe that you're one of the best speakers we've ever had on this show. Wow. I teach public speaking. I've given 5,000 speeches. Uh, I have cut people in the neck for saying like and you know, and I'll go after the ah uh, eventually. But otherwise, the presentation <laughs> was superb, and I suggest that you continue being the front person for the mm -hmm. company. Well, that means a lot, from yeah, coming from Mr. Bailey, who's often provided some very interesting critiques of, uh, of my presentation uh, from time to time, and I, and, but, I, but I welcome it. Sandy. Jace, I'm, I'm just curious how uh, you know, this particular concept succeeds in the, the marketplace out there. You've got Twitter going out with a $2 billion IPO, $13 billion, you know, market cap. Yeah. Uh, you know, how do you, how do you get some sense that you could be the one yeah. or one of the ones that's going to be a, you know, big success someday? How yeah. do you figure yeah. that out? That's yeah. a great question. Yeah. I think the one thing that I would say uh, that keeps me wanting to make sure this happens is that right now in the landscape of social media, you can be known and know each other by your collegial connections and your career through LinkedIn. You can be known by what's happening today on Facebook, on Pinterest. You can be known by your aesthetic and a sort of collection of objects. But if I want to be known and to know others in my life, by what they aspire to, by what their life goals are, there's no place for that. That does not exist. And if I think about what I would want to buy for a friend who put up their life goals, I would know much more about what would really matter in a gift. Or a, so I think we have a special place in that total landscape. Interesting. Alicia? You said you needed to get to 10,000. Mm -hmm. Where are you now? We have a small, small set. We've got about uh, 50 pairs of people who are trying it out together and using the social integration part of it. 
Um, and so it, it's really a tight group for the beta test. Um, but, we, um, but we see our way to 10,000 in the first quarter of 2014. So yeah, I was intrigued by the Pinterest potential connectivity here. Yeah. Mm. Um, I'm not the demographic, so I haven't spent any time on Pinterest. But I'm wondering whether you've looked at any ways that you can systematically connect the images on Pinterest to your images or mm. vice versa mm, mm. and somehow get some, some really good connectivity there. And just to add, um, I was actually talking to a client this morning who's also looking at Pinterest, the explosion there as an opportunity. And there's a guy, Chris Risley, who used to live in Portland. He works for Bessemer Venture Partners, which is the Series A investor in Pinterest. Mm -hmm. So at the right time, you know, I think I could make a connection there to, to help get you to the right people. That's that wonderful, Don. Huge, Thank Don. you. Don. Yeah. Don Lee. Well, so the question that you were asking about the interconnectivity, mm. there's a place on Pinterest right now where people are working, they're trying to work around the Pinterest interface to do vision boarding and it's not working, it's clunky. Mm. So I think Pinterest might at some point take note of that clunkiness and want to make connections. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Lee. If, if we find a good beta tester, we'll be happy to send him along, but I, I think temporarily we ought to send him to Secretary Sibelius, whose need is a little more acute than yours. <laughs> exactly. Sandy, uh, uh, how much of what you've put together here is, um, you know, the idea, and how much is it the technology platform? I mean, yeah. you didn't talk too much about the technology platform. Yeah. Is there a somewhat robust technology platform, or are you still developing it? Talk about that. Uh, so uh, we've taken a page out of what we learned from Top Gun Prep, and all of it is iterative. So we have been we've been designing a little bit, testing it, letting people see it, put a little bit more on it, keep testing it. Uh, and uh, so I have a co-founder, uh, Rich Nagel, who is a software engineer. We're full partners, and he is highly skilled at um, both bootstrapping and considering how we would scale. So he's been building this little by little and always considering the scalability. Yeah. The technology, yeah. it's his. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But you you're actually you actually did you are in the process of building that platform. We, ha we have a working platform right now. That if they go on lifekite.com or uh, uh, how so does people how do build you your vision board on lifekite? Uh, you right now you would snap a picture with your iPhone and load it up like that. Right. Um, and okay. you could certainly sign up, and then when the time comes, we'd invite you in. Yeah. So in terms of the people that are watching the show out there yeah. Uh, yeah. who are interested in learning yes. more about it or trying to, trying to maybe perhaps even volunteer as, uh, uh, for during the beta phase, yes. what, what, what would you suggest to them? I would suggest going to www.lifekite.com okay. and signing up at that splash page and then, um, and then letting us know who they are. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, excellent, excellent. Alicia. And are you looking for um, nationwide uh, demographics or are you looking for starting local and mm. um, what's your demographics in terms of the region? It's a great question. I think actually it would be sound to start regionally um, because I think when we get that 10,000 user threshold, uh, we're going to be more appealing to a smaller local um, advertiser. but in the long-term national. Yeah. yeah. Don. My, my daughter spent a semester at the Kripalu Institute mm. in Western Massachusetts. They do lots of seminars. Mm. You'd be a great person to mm. go do a seminar, mm. and that is smack dab in the middle it of your is. demographic. It sure is. So if you need connections there, That's let me great. know. That's great. Thank you. What is the institute? So Kripalu, I call it Yoga University. <laughs> so they're the number one trainer of people to teach yoga. Okay. And then they also have these facilities where it's your demographic, the, the women maybe skewing a little bit older, go for a lot of, mm. you know, spiritual uh, and, you know, physical renewal kind of seminars. Okay. Other comments, questions? Mr. Bailey? JC, you should uh, talk with Mr. Nagel and explain that true partnerships, like some marriages, uh, get in a lockup. 
sometimes. And you could avoid that if you each gave me a couple of shares so I could be the swing boat. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the offer, sir. <laughs> Well, we have a few minutes left on the show, and uh, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the things that I, I'd like to, to, to have entrepreneurs walk away from the show with is, all right, what are the next steps? Is there anybody here on the panel that, uh, that might be able to offer some help, some direction, a service? Uh, you clearly aren't looking for money at this stage. Is that correct? That's right. That's right. But you're looking for customers, you're looking for beta test customers. Yes, I, I think uh, any expertise about public relations, how to do that in, a really, in the new environment of public relations and also marketing, I think that would be very helpful. Yeah. Um, and all of you have mentioned things that I think would be useful. Um, yeah. So in terms of PR, uh, are you looking to, to uh, promote the product uh, on a radio show, TV? newspaper or, or f using social media as a way to market it? Can uh, you be yeah, a so little more specific I about think, that? Um, I think it would be really great to have a thought partner in, in how, do you get the, how do you get in front of the current Pinterest user and the Loha segment. What are they looking at? What are they reading? Where are they? And then starting to craft a message that will hit them where they naturally look. And, that, and Jay, um, so that demographic is what now? Uh, I'm um, not a Pinterest user. So Pinterest is um, mid 20s uh, through mid 40s. College educated women is their primary set. Okay. There are some s smaller subsets. Um, and then, uh, and then Lojas, Lifestyles of Health and Sustainability, is really runs the gamut in terms of a age and gender, but they're very green oriented. They're, you know, like the Whole Food Shopper, the Kripalu. Um, yeah, yeah. The, I mean, one of the obvious questions I have with any kind of entrepreneur that pitches on the show is, is there somebody out there that likes the idea? There are probably several hundred or several thousand watching or will watch uh, with YouTube uploads and whatnot. Okay, I like that idea. Mm -hmm. I'll go out and do it myself. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of barriers mm -hmm. uh, do you have now uh, uh, that uh, would, would make it difficult for somebody to come into this space? Yes. Do you have a, there, are there any patents uh, or any kind of intellectual property issues with um, this that you might want to think about? Yes, it's a, it's, it's a great question. And right away, Maine Technology Institute was pushing us in that direction. So uh, Veril Dana has established trademark for us. And, uh, and Greg we'll look Fryer is your uh, Greg attorney. Fryer, Greg Fryer, generous fellow. And, yeah. um, and, uh, and we've, uh, we've been looking at tagline trademark. And then also, uh, there's something really sticky about the kite concept. Um, we put that in front of uh, survey and interview folks, and the kite concept really does uh, resonate with this crew. So, yeah. 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 So is that something that you've created, that concept, the, yes. the kite? Yes, okay. yeah. Uh, Mr. Two, Bailey, in the thoughts, uh, stick with Greg Fryer. He is one very smart lawyer and a nice guy. But yeah. when you're a little further down the road, between Rob and I, I'm confident we could get you on the Ken and Mike show, which has a fairly wide audience. Mike will never understand what you're talking about. But <laughs> Ken will. And, uh, Ken and Mike. We'd give you some exposure. That's great. Thank you. Yes. Alicia. And as a marketing consultant, I, my forte is um, natural, organic, and lifestyle marketing. So I can help connect you with the right avenues to go down that path. It would be great wonderful. if you could connect with Alicia. Super, thank you. Yeah, that's she, great. She's, that's now that's I really great. want a piece of that company. <laughs> <laughs> now Mr. Bailey. <laughs> okay, and then on the digital marketing side, um, there are a couple great companies in Maine. Uh, one of my clients, uh, Shannon Kinney at Dream Local, that is her business. She's a digital marketing agency. And then also Rich Brooks here in Portland. Either of them, I think, could be really helpful in crafting the digital marketing side of that, that piece. We've got a couple of minutes left, so take your time. Uh, Sandy. Well, I'm on the capital side. Yeah. Sandy uh, uh, is involved, has been involved with venture capital, yes. worked with Bain, Bill Bain for years, okay. and uh, ran Hinkley Yacht Services. Mm. And so I, I, don't, I don't know if you, you know, it doesn't sound like you need capital now, uh, but that's, if you do, please feel free to reach out and oh. 
be certainly happy to talk about it with That's you. That's great. That's great. Tell me a little bit about the, the investor, Serendip. Serendip yeah, tell Ventures. Us about that. Yeah. yeah, Serendip is out of Philadelphia. Uh, and their incubator size, you know, so uh, so it's a very modest amount, but it's enough to really do a lot if you're careful, if you're a Yankee. Yeah. <laughs> are, are you doing this full time? Jason? No, yeah. no. What is your, uh, uh, what, what else do you do? I'm a grant writer. I oh, work for are? myself as a grant writer. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I'm a fundraiser for nonprofit organizations. Oh, Chiefly, great. my clients are in Manhattan, but some here in Maine as well. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, thank you. One other out local outlet, Anthony Kozner, uh, is a user experience consultant. Oh. He's also a Forbes.com blogger okay. um, and talks about uh, Silicon Valley stuff all the time. So as you're developing your, your UX, you, you ought to bring him in and get some feedback. Oh, perfect. Because it, it, it seems like you need to be at the cutting edge of image on the phone yes which you know it, it'd be important to know who the platforms yes. are out there that can help you be at that leading edge yes yes don this is yeah. really a lot of your you know your space and your expertise i mean what do you, do you think this has legs or do you think this has uh, i think it has great potential yeah. um but as Jason knows, you know, you, you have to go in there and actually see how the customers react yes. and iterate your way to finding the thing that really starts to capture people's minds. But I, I think it has tremendous potential, and I applaud you for all the great progress you've made. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we only have a minute left. I, I do want to thank you, unless there's a parting comment uh, that you'd like to make, but you, you did you. a terrific job. Uh, clearly, there's interest. Uh, uh, from everybody on the panel to work with you. You should feel free to work directly, and panel, feel free to directly contact uh, JASA. Uh, and our audience, those of you who are watching uh, the show, if this is something that you like, you're interested in, please feel free to connect with uh, JASA. It would be also helpful uh, to know down the road if, if you can give us some feedback in mm -hmm. terms of where you're at. So mm -hmm. again, thank you folks uh, for watching, and uh, we appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. All right. And panel, thank you. Mm -hmm. It's a good show.